Hello and welcome back to our Stealth AI series. We're currently working on our takedown executions and in the last episode we worked on the tracing which determines whether or not we're behind a character in order to take them down. In this part we're going to start working on getting the animations involved. So what we're going to first of all do is add a little fix for our head up display issue that we were having minor problems with last time. And all I'm going to do is in my function here, take down trace, we're going to change the get here to a validated get. Now I've done it for two of them. I'm just going to do it to the last one here. Just going to right click on my head up display, convert to validated get. And that will solve that issue. Uh, next, we're going to go and take a look at our character's takedown event. So, currently we're doing a takedown trace on our actor here. And what I'm going to do is, I'm taking this out actor, I'm going to store that as our possible target. So, on the variables here, we're going to go new variable. And we're going to do uh, takedown target. And this is going to be set to a character uh, actor object type. So go actor, like so. Hit compile, and then drag this out, and choose set, and plug that into the out actor of your takedown trace. So when it's empty, it means we can't take down anything, so I'll empty this variable out. And if we are going to take down something, it will fill this up. Next, we're going to go to our takedown input event that we made. Uh, find it. There it is. And we're going to take a look at that variable we just made. Choose get, and we're going to convert that to a validated get. So if it is valid, that means we can take down something. So in here, we're going to make a new function which handles the takedown. So go to new function, and we're going to do takedown. And the takedown is going to have uh, an actor referenced, so input. And this will be the target. And this target is going to be of a actor type. And uh, I think that would do for that. And then next what we're going to do is set it up for the takedown. So the way the takedown works is you want to unprocess the character that you're playing as. Tell them to move with an AI controller instead to get into position. And then carry out the animations. So... In here, we first of all have to set up the actual moving of the character to that location. So currently we've got target here. And I want to take this target and make the character walk towards that target. Now, this will only be valid if we're behind the target. So therefore, it should hopefully line up behind them perfectly. But nonetheless, what we're going to do is do a line trace back a little bit to make sure that we're getting exactly where we want to be. So we're going to take this target here and we're going to get the actor location and we're going to take the actor location and we're also going to take its forward vector get forward vector and we're going to multiply the forward vector by minus a distance and we'll do minus uh, let's say uh, 50 and we'll tweak this as we need to based on the animations we've got so this will look for a place behind the character and we're going to tell them to look behind their current location. So take the actor location here, and we want to um, add this vector onto it. So now we've got the location behind the player character, the uh, target actor. This location is going to be used to move the player character into position. So to do that, we need to tell the character here to be possessed. So first of all, we're going to come out of here, and we're going to disable movement. So it stops the character from walking around and taking any more inputs from the player controller. And then f after that, we're going to tell it to unpossess, which we may need to get the controller first. Get player controller. There we are. And tell it to unpossess. Next, we need to tell it to spawn a new AI controller. So spawn actor from class. And we want to choose this bog standard AI controller. Now, you, even though it's a controller, you still need a transform in here. So we're just going to come out and get the actor transform. Just like so. 
with the AI controller made, we're going to tell this AI controller to possess this current pawn here. So tell the pawn to be self, and that will tell this AI controller to con start controlling the third person character. So that when I do the next step, which is AI move to, or simple move to, sorry, move to uh, location. The move to location is going to be the goal here. Uh, the controller is going to be this. So we get controller, plug that in there. And the goal is going to come from here. Hit compile and save. Now before I carry on, I'm going to leave that as it is and come out of there. So next we're going to make the takedown function. Now this is going to be a couple of functions. The first one is getting the character into position. So we make a new function here for calling it prepare takedown. And on prepare takedown, we're going to have one input on that, and that's going to be the target of our takedown. And that's going to be an actor type. The takedown, we're going to cast to our uh, character. And what the first thing we need to do is tell both the player character and the enemy character to stop moving. So as character for the player, uh, the target here, we're going to do disable movement and plug that in. Like so. And we also want to disable movement for the player character. So we'll get out there, disable movement. And you'll see character movement component there. So that stops both the enemy and us. We then want to tell the player character to stop and unpossess from the player control. We don't want the player to accidentally move the character away. So we have to tell them to take away control and then pass it back to them afterwards. So on disable movement, after that, we're going to tell it to get the player character, uh, controller, sorry. And then unprocess this pawn. We're then going to tell it to spawn actor from class. And the actor from class here is going to be the AI controller. Spawn transform, we need to put one in anyway. Doesn't really matter for this, but we'll just use the actor transform for simplicity. And we're going to then take from there and take the return value and promote that to a variable like so and this will be the actually not take not promote to a variable sorry take it to a return node and the return node we're going to plug in our return value here from the controller i'm going to call that one controller we also want to take a copy of our character that we're taking down so I'm going to take that and promote that to a local variable. And that will be target lock. And plug that in like so. So at the end here, I can drag that out and plug that into my return node. So now I've got the controller that the player now has, which is the AI controller. And the target uh, that we have. Uh, we'll do uh, return target. So we need to output the location we want to prepare the player to stand in for the animation. So for that, we're going to drag out our target lock, local variable, choose get, and we're going to get the actor location, and also get the actor forward vector. So what we're going to do is multiply the forward vector by a negative value. That means we can get the behind vector. So if I took minus 50 into it and we may tweak that based on the animations we got but for now minus 50 it'd be fine i'm going to add these two vectors together and this combination of this gives us a pin here which indicates a uh, position that is 50 units behind the target location so we're going to plug that into our return node and we'll change that title there to um, target position. Uh, last thing we need to do here is we have to take the spawn actor AI controller here and tell it to possess uh, this pawn that we've got for the player. 
So drag that in, connect that up, and in pawn will be self. So now go into your event graph, and on the takedown input action, we're going to drag our prepare takedown event out, and plug in the target from our valid check, and we're now going to tell it to move to a position. So right click and just type in AI move to, and plug that in like so. The pawn is going to be self, the destination is going to be target position. Then when it's on success, we're going to drag that out and just do a print string for now and say hello. So let's test this out and we should see the player character when I push F move into a position and both of them stop moving. There you go. So my character gets into position ready to do the takedown. So it, it carried on like sort of walking on the spot a little bit there and that's entirely down to our acceptance radiance on here. So I'm going to change that to something a bit higher. We'll do like 25, for example. And that will make that less prevalent. You just tweak those numbers to get wherever your character is at there. Okay. Uh, last thing we're going to do is set the stand up on success. So in here, we actually made the stand up thing for it. So we want to just do the uh, stand up crouch prone in for action event so here so on success we want to take the stand up first of all so we're going to just call on success to stand up and then we're going to tell it to play two animations and those two animations are going to be required for the takedown so what we're going to do here is make a new function and this will be actual doing the takedown. And the takedown is going to take in an input and the input here is going to be the target and that's going to be a character reference. We're then going to take that reference for target here and take it to play montage. Now the montage you want to play is based on the animation. Now I've already made the animations for you. They're based on the mix of animations, but tweaked to work actually for a game. So import those in from the link in the description. And once you've got them in, there will be stealth takedown A and stealth takedown B. For each one, you want to make a montage. So right click on each one, go create and in montage, and right click create and in montage. And if you open them up, you will see what they are. So this one is when he, he is being attacked, so this is for the target. And then we've got the other one, which is for the attacker. Okay. So there are two animations. So the target here is going to play stealth target takedown A. And then we're going to do play any montage there. And do any montage set to set stealth takedown B compile and save go back to your event graph and after stand up drag in your takedown event plug that in the target here will come from our return target on a prepare takedown like so so once we move in position on success once it's finished moving it will stand up and then do the takedown event i'm just going to increase the acceptance radiance here to 50 and hopefully that makes it a little bit better um, and let's see how that looks. And it should hopefully play both animations at the same time. And I've synced them up already in, in um, Maya. And you get something that looks like that. Pretty cool, eh? So as you can see, we need to just finish things off by making the character die and stay on the floor. And also the player character to return to movement from the player controller. So let's go and do those. So, first of all, let's do returning control back to the player. So, on the return value from the stealth takedown, we're going to set a timer. So, set timer by event. And we're going to drag the return value from our animation montage here into the time there. And that means we have a time limit for when we can uh, resume control. So, I'm going to go back to my event graph and we'll do 
a uh, event in here. Custom event. Resume control. On a resume control, we're going to get the player uh, controller and tell it to possess this pawn. Hit compile, then go back to your takedown and set that event here by going from event, create event, and choosing the uh, resume control event from the drop down. So that should all compile just fine. So let's test to see if that resumes control just fine to us. Oh, I've got caught out. Hang on. There we are. And now I've got control back. Okay. So that's that part done. Next, we need to make the character die and stay dead. So I'm going to go and into my character again for the takedown. And on the takedown, after we've done the set time by event, we are going to tell the target here to basically destroy it and stop moving and all sorts of things like that. So right click in here and type in target and you'll get the variable for target. Now this refers to this target here. So from that, I can get the controller for it and tell it to unpossess first of all. And then I want to tell that target to set the collision capsules uh, collision to nothing. So set collision uh, enabled to false. So hit compile and save and we should see that we can move through it and stuff like that. See some changes. And do the takedown. Down he goes. Okay, but now I can walk through him. He's like nothing. So all we have to do is tell him after he's played that animation just to lay there. Now the easiest way of doing that is on the custom animation for his montage. This one. We're going to go to the left hand side the blend options and tell the blend options to not enable auto blend. So untick that box and what that means it will stay in its last position. So let's finally end things off and have a look here. Down it goes. Snap. And he's down. And we have a stealth takedown. And that's it. That's the series, pretty much. We're going to do one more episode after this, and that is showing how to map all this stuff to some fancy meshes and make the thing look good as well as play uh, better by fixing a few little bugs here and there to tidy things up. So join us in that final episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can watch that part plus many other videos before anyone else. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.